Hello YouTubers, welcome to the first video ever for the Talk and Shop channel. My name is Don and we got an interesting topic for you. It's been talked about a lot on the discussion forums. Uh, it's a lot easier to show than it is to type out, but we're going to talk about the DC generator on your old tractor. Now a lot of guys are getting out of uh, rebuilding the DC generator. It's kind of an antique technology. Uh, the good news is with a few simple hand tools and a little bit of knowledge, you can repair these yourself. They're not that complicated. So why don't you grab a seat and I am going to meet you at the shop dry erase board and we'll talk a little bit on what makes the generator work. And then we'll come back out here in the shop and we'll get into the teardown and I'll show you how to do some testing and with armed with this knowledge, you should be able to repair these yourself. So we'll see you in a minute up at the shop dry erase board. Okay, so we're back up here at the dry erase board, but before we get into um, our discussion, I'm gonna talk to you about a couple things that I'm not gonna talk about. Uh, we're not gonna talk about alternators and alternator conversions. That's a whole nother topic for a whole nother video, and we'll maybe do something on that at a later date. Also not gonna talk about a dual output generator. Now, dual output generators, uh, I know a lot of your John Deere diesel tractors that were uh, the two-cylinder diesels that were um, had 24 volt electric start. They uh, they use the dual output. Uh, we're not going to talk about those either. They're not that much more complicated, but I just, for this first video, let's get everybody on the same page. Uh, we're also not going to talk about third brush generators. Now, typically you don't see a third brush generator unless you're working on an old car. There aren't very many tractors that use the third brush generator, so we're not going to talk about those. I also wanted to point out that some of the stuff I'm about to say you're going to have to take at face value. Now, if you want to dump into the the meat and bones of it and you want to get into the scientific part of it, you can Google Faraday's Laws of Magnetic Induction, and that will tell you everything you need to know. But uh, with that said, just, just keep in mind that some of the stuff I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to just trust me and just it's true. So without further ado, what, what is it that makes your, your generator charge your tractor? Well, quite simply put, it's a magnet. That's all there is to it. It's just, it's a magnet. Now, whenever you pass current through a conductor, or if you want to get scientific, whenever electrons move, there's a magnetic field around that conductor or a magnetic field around the electrons. If we intersect that magnetic field with another conductor, we can induce a voltage within the second conductor. Now that can most commonly be viewed by the old grade school science trick where you took a six volt flashlight ball or battery and you took a pole barn spike and you wrapped wire around it, you hooked it to the battery and you could sit there at your desk and you could pick up paper clips that proves the fact that when you pass current through a conductor, it creates a magnetic field. So let me switch you over to the dry erase board and we'll talk a little bit about the generator and what's inside of it. We're also gonna talk a little bit about the voltage regulator because that's a very important part. Without it, the, uh, not only would the generator run like a motor, but when it actually did start to charge, it would just overcharge your battery and cook it. So I'm gonna switch you over to the dry erase board and we'll start talking. Okay, so we're up here at the dry erase board, and this is our generator. This is the commutator. It is on the end of the armature. Now, your armature is nothing but a coil of wire. Remember, we got to have a coil of wire to intersect a magnetic field to make it work. Here's our coil of wire. It is nothing more than an iron fixture with a whole bunch of wire wrap in it, and you will see what I'm talking about when we get into the teardown. So this is our commentator slash armature. This is our ground brush. This is our hot brush. These are the pole shoes. The pole shoes hold what we call a field coil. So when we start to charge, we're going to pass current through the, or through the uh, field coil. That is going to create a magnetic field. Remember, this is our rotating wire. 
So we're intersecting that magnetic field, creating a voltage within the armature. The voltage or the current is going to leave the hot brush. It's going to leave the generator out of the A terminal or sometimes they're called the gen terminal. Don't get confused. They are one and the same. So our current is going to come out and it is going to go all the way down to the generator terminal on the voltage regulator. Here's a picture of our voltage regulator. Now the first thing that happens is we've got a cutout relay. Why do we have a cutout relay? Well, the cutout relay, relay separates the generator from the battery any time generator voltage is less than battery voltage. If we did not do that, the battery would discharge through the generator because it would try and run the generator like a DC motor. Now an alternator doesn't have a cutout relay because that uses a diode, it doesn't need it. But we're not going to talk about alternators today, so try not to get confused. This is our cutout relay. As we start to charge, this relay is going to close that set of points, and it is going to allow the current to come out of the battery terminal on the voltage regulator, and it's going to go to your amp meter, or if you don't have one, it will go directly to the battery. So that's how it leaves. Now, that's simply put that's it that's all we need we have our magnetic field we have our rotating wire we intersected that magnetic field we induced the voltage and it made it to battery that's how it charges it's quite simply put that's all there is to it we're missing one key element and that is how do we control it well, we control the output of the generator by controlling the strength of the magnetic field. The stronger the magnetic field, the more charge it has. Well, how do we control that? Well, on an A-type, this is an A-type. Most of your Delco Remis are A-type. Um, International Harvester, Alice Chalmers, John Deere, all your American-made uh, tractors pretty much used a Delco charging system. Most of your Delcos are A-type. Now there is a B-type, and I'll get into the difference here in a minute, but this is, this is an A-type. Now don't get confused A, B-type with positive or negative ground, because an A-type will charge positive or negative ground, and a B-type will charge positive or negative ground. The types have nothing to do with what they will charge. The types are how the voltage regulator controls the field. On an A-type, our voltage regulator controls our field ground. So, our field is getting its power from the hot brush. We're creating our magnetic field. Once again, this is our pole shoe. This is our field coil. We're going to leave out of the F-terminal. And we're going to come to the F-terminal on the voltage regulator. Now, inside the voltage regulator, the current can go through one of two paths. It can either go directly to ground or it can go to ground through a resistor. If we want a low charge, we're going to send the current to ground through the resistor. That's going to create a small magnetic field back here on the generator, and it's going to give us a low charge. If we want a high charge, these points will close, and it will allow the field to go directly to ground, creating a very strong magnetic field within the generator, which also creates a high charge. You might be asking, once the points are closed, why doesn't it go to ground through the resistor? Well, you have to remember that current will always find the easiest path to ground. With the points closed, it is easier for the current to go to directly to ground versus going to ground through the resistor, so it will go directly to ground. So, basically that is it. I am going to redraw this and I will include some pictures in the video that will show both an A type and a B type. The only difference between an A type and a B type is in a B type our voltage regulator controls field power. The field would be grounded within the generator and it would get its power from the voltage regulator. I will make some drawings and I will include some pictures of those drawings so you can pause the video and look at those drawings. It'll also be a little neater and things will be together a little better um, to kind of give you an understanding. So with that said, we're going to move out to the shop and we are going to tear one down. I've got a tractor in for an overhaul. The tractor was non-running when I got it. It was putting coolant into the crankcase, so I have a generator 
that I do not know if it works. If it doesn't work, I can tell you right now, the voltage regulator is holding on with one bolt, so that is gonna get replaced regardless. But we will go ahead and take these pieces apart. We'll examine each piece one at a time, and then we will show you some testing, and I will show you how I test, show you the stuff that I go through, and we will hopefully get this thing back charging once we go through the rebuild process, I will put it back on the tractor and I'll bring you guys back for another video. That'll be part three. We'll go ahead and we'll hook it up. We'll get the tractor started and we'll make sure she charges before I return the tractor to the customer. So with that said, I will meet you out on the bench and we will start our teardown. Okay, so we're up here to the bench vise. We got our generator uh, pinched in device. This is our F terminal. This is our A or Gen terminal. Now, once again, don't confu get confused because uh, sometimes they'll be marked A, sometimes they'll be marked Gen, but it doesn't matter. They're one and the same. This back here is a tachometer drive. This particular tractor has a tachometer that's driven off the back side of the generator. Sometimes you will see that. Sometimes you will see power steering pumps driven off the back side of the generator. There'll be a flange here. Your power steering pump will go there, so don't be alarmed if you see that. Two bolts should come right off. You usually got a sp uh, spline coupling in there. Um, that's not that big a deal. Don't get intimidated. Just take that, up, take that off to get your generator off. Uh, one of the first checks I do now, we've got this up on the vise, rotates free, we've got our fan and our pulley in here. I give this a wiggle. You're going to have a bearing or a bushing up here, nine times out of ten, it's a bearing up here. And back here you usually have a bushing. So I, I go in there with a the screwdriver, now you don't have to get crazy with it. I'm just seeing if there's any movement in that generator shaft. If that bushing is shot and that armature in there can wobble as that spins, if that armature reaches over and touches your field, it'll ground itself out and it won't charge. I'm not getting any kind of play on this one, so I think we're in pretty good shape uh, bearing bushing-wise here. Um, another thing to note, this one still has the tag. Now, uh, that could be pretty hard to read on camera, but our generator number is 11004355. So we're going to come over here to my toolbox, and I've actually got the factory service manual for this uh, tractor. And there's our generator number 11004355. We can see that it is an A type. This is our brush spring tension, which we'll get into that in the teardown. And then it gives the outputs. Now I did want to note down here, if you look, this tractor could have had a Delco Remy alt alternator. And if you notice, if it had the alternator, that set up as a B circuit. Now, most Delcos are A circuit, but this is a prime example where you can only use that as a general rule of thumb. Never take it for granted. You've always got to check. Either uh, you can type the generator number in online sometimes or find out or through a factory service manual, but you always have to verify whether you're dealing with an A circuit or a B circuit because everybody made both. So you can never be 100% sure unless you look it up or if you tear it apart and look how it's wired internally. But we can tell by our number here that we're dealing with an A circuit. So let's go back over to the bench and we'll finally start the teardown on this thing and we'll see what's going on. Okay, so we're back up here to the bench. Now one of the first things I like to do before I do any disassembly, now we, we checked for uh, bearing play uh, in, a, in a little bit ago and everything was good there. So before we do any other teardown, what I like to do is I like to hook up a battery and I like to try and run it like a motor. Now that doesn't necessarily mean that it will charge, but if it runs like a motor here in the bench, then there's a pretty good chance that everything inside as far as your armature and your fields are okay and it probably just needs a cleanup. So I've got a couple of jumper wires hooked up here. I've got a battery set up. You can kind of see the battery on the corner of the camera there. 
Um, so from the hot side of the battery, I am going to the armature terminal and then I've got a ground hooked up to a case ground. Now I'm just going to go and touch this to the ground side of the battery and you see we get some sparks and it does not run like a motor. Oh, there it goes. There it goes. So that does run like a motor, although I had to spin it to get it to go. So I'm guessing that this is going to need a good cleanup on the inside. Yeah, that ground water is pretty hot. Um, I'm guessing that this is going to need a good cleanup on the inside. I doubt we're going to find a problem with the field or with the armature or anything like that. But we'll take it apart and we'll give it a good cleanup and we'll see what's going on. So. We're going to jump back here to the back. I'm going to take my screwdriver and we got two screws. It's going to remove this tachometer drive. See if we can get you guys positioned a little better here. There, maybe that's a little better. You can see what's going on now. All right, take the second screw out. Now these tachometer drives have different gears in them depending on what ratio it is. You can take these apart and you can actually change the ratio. There you can see our gears. And you can um, change the, like I say, it's a, it's a fiber gear and you can change them out. Um, we don't have to mess with that. It was working if you saw when we turned it around or when we turned it over. I gotta get a smaller screwdriver. There we go. Might have to replace that gasket. We don't want to get any moisture in there. I'm going to set this uh, tack drive aside. All right, so now we're going to take a 7 16 Pop these two bolts out here. Our jumper wires could come off now. Now these bolts are long, they go all the way to here, they go all the way to the front of the case. And that's actually one thing you got to watch when you put it back together, you got to make sure that them bolts aren't touching anything grounding something out on the inside. I've had that happen before too. These housings are usually timed to the back of the case with a little pin, they'll only go one way when you put them back together. Maybe should have grabbed a ratchet. Ratcheting in wrench at least. There we go. She freed up. And see, there's our top one. And there's our bottom one. And we're going to go get a small hammer and give that a tap.
These cases are cast iron, so we don't want to get too crazy with them. She's coming loose. Lord knows how long it's been since this has been apart. Yep, and there's that pin I was talking about. So this cap will only, this end cap, only go on one way. Just gently working that off. We don't want to get too hefty with the prying and bust something. You know what? Sometimes them gears do have to. No, that one looks like it's passing through the hole. Okay. Seeing a lot of weeds and stuff on the inside. I'm wondering if from sitting we didn't have a mouse. There we go. There's our bushing. Okay, we're to the inside of her. Yeah. Get you guys over here where you can see. All right. So here's the inside. That's our bushing. And I don't know why that looks like it was spinning on the shaft. We have to do some double nut deciphering there and figure out what's going on there. But this is our commutator right here. These are our brushes. This is our hot brush. This is our ground brush. We should see some spring tension. The spring tension that the book was talking about is right here. The brush holders are under spring tension. That's what keeps them pushed up against the commutator. Wow, a lot of stuff in there. Looks pretty dirty. All right, so I'm gonna set you guys back down. Now this should pull out the front side with the fan and everything still attached to it. We shouldn't have to take any of that off for now. So I'm going to set you guys back down and see if I can't pull that out of there. All right, guys, this is our armature. Stand it up here. So this is our armature. This is a commutator. This is where the brushes ride. Now, remember, we got to have two things to make a generator charge. We need a magnetic field, and we need to intersect that magnetic field at a 90 degree and induce a voltage. Here is our coil of wire that's doing the intersecting right here. All this is is a whole bunch of wire coiled back and forth. So what happens is, pick a commutator bar, we'll take this one. So a wire hooks here, makes a whole bunch of turns, goes to the next bar. Then we start off from that bar again, make a whole bunch of turns, and at the next bar, start off again, make a whole bunch of turns, so on and so forth, till we work our way all the way around. So this is what's intersecting our magnetic field. Our magnetic field is in there. The brushes look to be in good shape, got lots of meat on them. 
the brush holders don't want to move very well. We'll have to give her a good cleanup. But that's what we're looking like in there. You can see, well, let me get a light. Take you over here and grab a light. Let's see if I can do this. I got the camera in one hand, the light in the other. Yeah, there, that's a little better. You can see our pole shoe. There's our field coil. This is what's creating the magnetic field. And that armature with that coil of wire just sits there and spins in that magnetic field. And as we inter intersect that magnetic field with this coil of wire back here with the armature, we induce a voltage within that armature. And the current travels out through the hot brush and goes back to our battery. All right, so I am going to unhook these jumper wires. Um, I'll see you guys back here in a minute. I'm going to get my DVOM out, and we will take a look, and we'll make a couple electrical tests, and we'll see if we can make this thing charge again. I'll be right back with you. Okay, guys, we're back up here at the bench. I went off camera, and I went ahead and cleaned everything up. And I didn't want to bore you with uh, on-camera cleaning, but it's pretty straightforward. I just put the, uh, the uh, body... And the parts tank wash the outside of it i blew the inside out but i did not uh, put any part solvent down there um, i don't know if we want to get all uh, a caustic solvent down in there and get all that stuff uh, all gooey and everything so i pretty clean once i blew it out so i just left the inside alone and i cleaned the outside and i pulled the brushes out we were talking earlier when we looked in the manual there was a brush spring tension. It was 28 ounces. That is set right here. I'm going to be totally honest with you. I'm not going to lie to you. I have never checked that. If you've got a spring scale, you can hook a, a wire on it and you can pull this and see how much force it takes to work that. It's supposed to be 28 ounces according to the book. That feels pretty good. That's all I've ever went by is feel. I'm going to give these springs just a shot of oil. I got to get crazy with it. I just don't want them binding. Now, a couple of electrical tests. I got my DVOM set up here. I've got it on continuity. You can hear it beep. So this is our field here, guys. This is our magnetic field. This is what our armature is going to intersect in order to induce a voltage within it. And it's going to create that current within the armature. And that's what's going to charge our battery. So these are the field coils that are held in by the pole shoes. Those pole shoes are held in with two screws on the outside of the body. You can see those screws, and I don't take them out unless you positively absolutely have to, because those are usually set in there pretty tight. Uh, they're usually put in with an impact driver. you got to take them out with an impact driver. And they can be kind of a pain to work with, so unless we absolutely positively have to take them out, we're not going to. So I'm going to show you a couple tests that I do here on the body. And this is our field terminal. Now, this is where our field is going to ground. Remember on an A-type, the field grounds in a voltage regulator. That's how we control the strength of the magnetic field, therefore controlling how much current that our armature produces. It gets its power from right here, the hot brush. This is our hot brush, this is our ground brush. So it gets its current from the hot brush. There's a wire underneath there. You probably can't see it on camera, but it hooks into the field coil here. This one jumps over to the other field coil, wraps around the pole shoe, comes out here. Two things, well, a couple different things we're going to do. First of all, we're going to check continuity through the field. So I am going to touch here and here. And we should have continuity. If I can scrape through the years of crap. Well, there we go. I heard it beep. We just got some stuff. I should have cleaned these terminals. There we go. You can hear my meter beeping. We got continuity through the field. It is 0 0.007 kilo ohms. So that is good there. One other thing we're going to check. We're going to see if the field is shorted to the case. That field should be insulated from the case. So I'm going to touch here. And I'm going to touch here. I got a spot cleaned up. 
and we are showing open so our field is okay two other tests i do now our two terminals right here this is our field terminal this is our uh, this is our armature or gen terminal this is where current comes out and goes back to the battery through the cutout relay now this has to be insulated from the case obviously we don't want our current grounding out before it even gets to the battery so this terminal or this stud is pushed through an insulator it's insulated from the case same thing with the field terminal we wouldn't want to ground our field at the case we will want to ground it through the voltage regulator so we can control it if we ground it at the case if we just jump this wire right here to ground our generator is going to go to full output and it's just going to overcook our battery so both of these studs are insulated from the case and i want to be i want to verify that so i'm going to touch a stud and i'm going to touch the body they should be insulated okay you probably can't see my meter there. Let me see if I can turn that around a little bit. Is that any better? Yeah, not by much. But you don't hear it beeping, so we are open there. Here, maybe if I sneak around this way. There we go. Now you can maybe see my meter. And we are not shorted there. So everything within the case is good. I give the springs a little oil, they're moving free. Everything tests out good. So I'm gonna bring the armature back up and we're gonna run a couple tests on the armature. And then maybe if the armature tests out good, which it should, we should be ready to put this thing back together. All right, so here's our armature all cleaned up. Now, a couple things. This dum dum me spoke too soon. There is nothing wrong with this bushing. If you remember back earlier in the video when I pulled this apart, I thought that there was something wrong with the bushing, but there's nothing wrong with that bushing. That is an oil passage. So our end cap has an oil channel with a wick. That wick lays in there and there's a little dust cap. You take that off every day and give her one or two drops of oil. And that's what keeps that bushing lubricated, so there is nothing wrong with that bushing. I cleaned up the commutator with a piece of 320 grit sandpaper. Now, I'm going to tell you, the only reason I did that is this armature has been turned before, and I don't think it was turned that long ago, judging by how much life it seems to be there are in the brushes. Um, I don't think this is too far out of square. If your armature had a lot of life on it and the brushes were worn down, you would take it to a machinist. They would chuck this in a lathe. They would turn this true. And then you would have to undercut each one of these. We'll maybe get into that in another video. I just don't think this needs it right now. So we are not going to mess with it. I just cleaned it up with a little bit of 320 grit sandpaper. Same thing here. I cleaned up the uh, body of the armature with a little 320 grit. Got that all cleaned up nice. So now a couple different tests we do here. Number one, we want to make sure it's not shorted to the shaft. If the armature is shorted to the shaft, it has to be sent out and rewound, and that can get kind of pricey. So I'm going to touch here on an iron bar, and I am going to touch the shaft. Uh-oh. Our armature may be shorted. Let's try it here. Oh, you want to know what? I did that wrong. Disregard that last test. What I want to do is I want to touch the commutator. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, so that seems to be all right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to test through continuity. Each one of these bars should have continuity through it. So I'm just going to go ahead and touch. Beautiful, next one, next one, next one, next one. This is wound in series.
All right, continuity checks. So that's about the only tests I do on the armature. Um, if you get in the book, there's a couple different more tests you can do, but I think we're okay. I think this is gonna be ready to put back together. Uh, everything cleaned up and checked out real good. I will try and run it like a motor once I get it all put back together. Um, just to double check and make sure if there's a problem with it, I wanna know before I put it back on the tractor. So I'm gonna go ahead off camera, I'm gonna put that back together, and then I'm gonna pull the voltage regulator off and I'm gonna bring you guys back. Now, like I said before, the voltage regulator shot. It's got a mounting hole broke off in it. Even if it's good, I'm not gonna let the tractor leave here like that. Um, I'm gonna put a new voltage regular, regulator on it. But for the point of the video, we're gonna go ahead and pull that thing apart and have a look at it just so I can show you guys what's inside, how you would adjust it. I've never adjusted one. I know how to do it, but every time I buy one, they seem to output just fine. So I'll show you guys how to adjust it. Um, yeah, we'll take it apart. We'll have a look at it. So I'll see you guys back here in a few minutes. I'll have you back up on the bench. We'll have the voltage regulator off and we will go ahead and take a look. Okay guys, so we went ahead off camera. I went ahead and reassembled the generator. Um, I got the, the drive for your tachometer put back on. Um, I went ahead, it was just reassemble, reverse of disassemble. Nothing to it, straightforward. I got our jumper wires hooked back up, so I'm going from the positive of the battery to the gen terminal, and the ground side of the battery I got right here, and you'll see when I touch it, our generator goes ahead and runs like a motor. Wire's not getting hot. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call the generator done. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on a, uh, put the dumb stamp on it. Now these here are oil cups for your bushings. I'm gonna give them a couple shots of oil and I'm gonna go ahead and put her on the, uh, put her on the uh, dumb pile. I'm gonna pull you over here to the voltage regulator. Clip you on the side of the bench here. So this is our voltage regulator, and I kind of lied. I got my DVOM set up here. Let's see if we can get you guys in a little better here. So we've got our terminals. This is our field terminal. This is our battery terminal. This is our load terminal, and underneath is our gen terminal. So this is coming from the gen terminal on the generator. Field comes from the F terminal on the generator. Battery is hooked directly to battery. That's usually through an amp meter, but if you've got an early tracker that doesn't have an amp meter, then this will go directly to battery. Now this is the load terminal. Now not all voltage regulators have a load terminal. The load terminal is power for your dash. And that's the best way I can put it. It's gonna, this is where you're gonna take off and you're going to power your ignition switch, your lights, or any kind of other electrical accessory. Usually you go up to your ignition switch and then you go off from there. You gotta go down for your starter and out to your ignition coil and out to your light switch and so forth. Not all voltage regulators have that and you do not have to use it if you don't want to. If you wanna pull power from your amp meter to power your ignition switch, you can do that and you can leave this L terminal unhooked. This will function 100% without that hooked up. All that's doing is connecting the load to battery at all times. And you can see there by my meter, we have continuity. And actually, I tested this off camera before I brought you guys on. Actually, this voltage regulator actually tests out okay. Now, I did lie to you when I said that we had a broken mounting strap because we don't. We have two broken mounting straps. Both of them are broke. This was literally laying, hanging off of the wiring harness. That's not gonna work because this case has to be grounded. You can see this ground strap right here. I cut it to take it off the tractor. I just cut the whole wiring harness because I'm gonna rewire the tractor but this ground strap would have looped around and went through the bolt hole because this case has to be grounded. Why does it have to be grounding? Well, it's controlling the ground of our field, so it would only make sense that the case itself would have to be grounded. But let me, I'm gonna, um, this is junk, I'm gonna replace it anyway because of these broken mounting straps. 
but I'm going to run you through some testing anyway so you guys can test it. Uh, if you've got a tractor, you can test yours. So the first thing we want to do is test the cutout relay. Now the cutout relay is this relay right here, and it is the heaviest relay. You can always tell the cutout relay because it's got the heaviest wire. So this is our cutout relay, and all this is going to do is when the generator starts to produce current, this is going to connect our battery to the generator. So your tractor is off, you've got residual magnetism left in the generator. When you start your generator, it starts to charge, or when you start your tractor rather, your generator is going to start to charge. <clears throat> As it builds charge, it's going to close this set of contact points right here. I don't know, let me see if I can get you in there. There's a set of contact points right here. It's going to close these. When these close, it's going to connect bat to gen, and we can test that by clipping on the battery terminal and the gen terminal. We're going to clip under bat here, or gen underneath, and this is our battery terminal. And you can see now that we're open, and when I push down, oops, did I, oh, I come unhooked here. Clip that back on. Okay, so gen to bat you can see I'm open when I push the uh, relay closed <clears throat> you can see that my meter is beeping and we got zero all the way across so that's good the cutout relay is actually working here <clears throat> now we're gonna go over to the voltage control side now remember our voltage regulator is doing what is controlling field ground how do we do that well we either pass it through a resistor or we pass the ground directly to ground. That controls the strength of the magnetic field within the side of, inside the generator. The stronger the magnetic field, the more charge we got. So, here's our field terminal. Here's our ground terminal. So, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip this on here. And I'm going to touch the F terminal. And you will see that we are going directly to ground. Notice that the meter's beeping, and we have zero, 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 zero all the way across. So that is going directly to ground. That would be high charge. When the battery gets charged and we want to go to low charge, these points would close. And notice we still have continuity, but the resistance goes up. We're 0.063 kilo ohms. If I let it back up, we go back down to zero. So all we're doing is sending our ground either directly to ground or to ground through a resistor. By doing that, we're controlling the strength of the magnetic field, which controls our charge output. And if we flip it upside down, and this is our resistor right here. We're either bypassing this or we are going directly to ground right here, which once again, I cut this, but this would loop around. There would be a mounting strap here. These voltage regulators are, are mounted on a rubber strap that isolates them from vibration. So this would loop around and it would be in the bolt hole. So when you bolted this to your tractor, you would in turn be grounding the case, which is what we want in an A, in an a circuit. Not much more I can tell you about this. Oh, adjustment. I'm sorry, adjustment. So here's how you would adjust it. And the the I've never actually had to adjust one seems like whenever I buy a new voltage regulator, the factory setup is actually um, right on the money. But if you did have to adjust it, you would bend these tabs right here, which would increase spring tension, which would affect on how hard these relays open and close. Now, you shouldn't have to do a whole lot of adjusting on the cutout relay because this relay is either open or it's closed, one or the other. This actually vibrates quite a bit when the generator's working. It's not just a high charge, low charge. It, it kind of cycles back and forth. And the only way I can describe it is if you can remember when you set your spark plug and you had the old AC Delco spark plug tool and you could reach in there and you could clip it on there and you could bend the electrode on the spark plug, you're going to be doing the same thing with the voltage regulator. You're going to be bending this up or down to increase or de decrease spring tension. That's how you adjust them. So not much more I can tell you on the voltage regulator. On a car voltage regulator, <clears throat> you would have another set of points over here. This would be bigger. You'd have another set of points over here. Usually cars were both voltage <clears throat> and current sensitive, but we're not going to get into that because um, 
you know, this video is all about your old tractor generator and you don't see those a whole lot on tractors. So <clears throat> with that said, guys, next time we uh, next time we talk, I'm going to have this on the uh, on the tractor and I'll have the tractor back together and running and I'll bring you guys in for one last clip and I'll show you it running and I'll show you the generator producing current. I'll show you how I wired it up. Uh, with that said, we'll see you next time and uh, yeah, we'll have the tractor running. Okay guys, got the tractor put back together. Uh, she turned winter time on us, so we're in the shop. We got the door closed, we got the heat on. Uh, that's probably the fan you hear in the background. But uh, So I got the generator installed and I just wanted to uh, come back and show you guys. So generator's all installed. Green wire is the armature wire. The yellow wire is the field wire. It's going to come on around. I made up a new harness. You can see it right here goes up underneath the battery box. Now we're going to slip over to the other side of the tractor. Wires come on out here. Green goes to the gen terminal. Remember that was the armature terminal on our generator. So it goes to the gen terminal on the voltage regulator. Yellow goes to the field. The red wire is the load wire that is going up to my switch. That's feeding the ignition switch. The black wire is the battery wire, but it doesn't go directly to the battery. It goes to battery through the amp meter. So this one circles up, goes up in behind the dash, hooks to the amp meter. We come out of the amp meter, come back down, and we're coming all the way around, and we're hooking to right here, which is my positive battery cable, which goes up to the positive side of the battery. So when our generator starts, when you start your tractor, the generator starts to produce current. The cutout relay in here is going to close and it's going to connect the gen terminal to the bat terminal. So current will flow out of the generator to the gen terminal through the cutout relay into the battery terminal. Come out of the battery terminal. We will go up to our amp meter, drive our amp meter, come back down, circle back around, come to here where it's hooked to the positive battery cable and it will follow this up and go right in and charge our battery. So I got a few more things to do and then I'm going to try and start it. I get it started, we're going to go ahead and uh, polarize or flash the voltage regulator. I'll show you that and then uh, hopefully we'll be charging. So I'll be back in a few minutes. Okay guys, we're back one last time. Finally got her started. I'm running out of temporary gas tank set up, but I got her started. There's our gen. If we come back over here, notice our ammeter gauge. We are charging, so there you go, guys. I hope that uh, helps you out. If you got a DC gen, you got to uh, tear apart. Uh, like and subscribe and uh, leave your comments below. Thanks.